Hey guys, welcome to How to Loop in Dead by Daylight. My tutorials are a little more in depth than what I typically see online. Uh, so, I mean, I do thank you for the patience, but keep in mind that this is an all inclusive tutorial to hopefully get anybody from a rank 20 all the way down to like a rank, a boosted rank one. With that being said, since the video is gonna be long, I'm just gonna jump right into it. So first for looping, let's talk about pallets. Each map generates a random number of pallets each time you load into that map. As I'm sure you've noticed, sometimes they're in different places. Sometimes it feels like there's not a lot of pallets. Sometimes it feels like there's too many pallets. As Killer and Survivor, this can kind of tip the scales in either one's uh, direction, making it easier or harder for that side. For the sake of this video, we're going to focus mostly on Groaning Storehouse, just for examples. Groaning Storehouse is one of my favorite maps. Unfortunately, there's about to be a rework with the infinite window. So I'm trying not to even talk about main at all. We're not trying to specify any specific main building, just like filler pallets and different loop variations. So the most important thing you need to do when looping pallets of any kind, any loop anywhere where you're running from the killer is you need to hug the surface you're running around as tightly as you can so that you have the shortest distance you're running in because if the killer hugs it as tight as possible and you fail to do so, they're gonna catch up faster than they normally would um, if you did hug it as close as you possibly can. And I'm gonna demonstrate that now with uh, two looping examples on the same spot. Now this has obviously just been one loop and there's more loops that we're gonna explain in just a few moments. Uh, but what I want to explain is just before that clip ended, uh, I stopped and then kept running and the killer stopped at the pallet. But this is an example of something I wanna mention before we talk about anything else, which is a 50-50. Now in Dead by Daylight, almost every single chase at a crucial moment will go through what is called a 50-50. And basically what that means is it's a coin toss. Now in this chase with this Billy, just a moment ago, I baited the vault to pretend like I was gonna vault. Like I went, I curved out and curved in as though I was going to vault. And now what I'm doing is basically the same thing, except this time I dedicated. In my mind, either he's gonna think I'm gonna vault and he's gonna double back towards the stairs. And if I don't vault in that instance, I create distance. Or he's gonna think I'm gonna fake it. And hopefully I actually think and vault so that he does dedicate forward and waste time that he could have spent doubling back, again, giving me distance. In his mind, it's very similar, almost exactly the same, it just flipped. Okay, so that's probably enough about 50-50s for now. Let's go ahead and move on to different tiles and how to loop them. Last thing I will say about 50-50s is that there's four different outcomes reliant on my two choices. I'm just gonna show those below briefly while we transition to the next topic. So now what we'll talk about is this little image that I actually grabbed off Reddit and uh, I'll link the post in the description. Basically what we're gonna do now is talk about how to loop TNL walls, how to loop the two variation of jungle gyms, how to basically how to loop the shack and how to loop the other filler palette that's a palette gym. It's, basi it's basically just another filler palette but we'll just quickly go over that just real quick so nobody's confused if they find that in their match. Okay, so we'll talk about TNL wall looping first. The diagram on the screen is from the Reddit post that I've shared with you. Basically what it's saying is the green line is the most optimal path. If the killer goes around the outside, which is exactly what's happening in the video now, it allows you to take the most optimal path where you always loop from the inside to the outside of the wall, as the green line indicates. If the killer lets you do this, even if they have Bloodlust 3, Typically, you can vault each window until it blocks you out, which means you will vault each window three times. A killer should never, ever, ever loop on the outside of a TNL wall. They should always loop on the inside, but not every killer knows that, which of course means there are killers that are gonna let you really juice a TNL wall until it's empty. The secondary path is this yellow path. And as you'll see in a moment when I show you the, the optimal killer path, uh, this yellow path indicates the 50-50. 
a killer can trigger a 50-50 by going simply through the middle of the TNL wall, which I'll show you now. What this does is forces the survivor to either take a hit or run around the top or bottom of the top of the T or around the bottom of the L. And the survivor then has two choices. The survivor can either vault the window or the survivor can pretend to vault the window. The killer might double back by moonwalking or something on the edges. So basically the survivor can either vault or pretend to vault, just as we spoke about before with the 50-50s. All right, so let's talk about a long wall jungle gym. And by the way, there's jungle gyms and there's pallet gyms. The difference between the two is a jungle gym has a pallet and a window, which means it has lots of things to do, hence it's called a jungle gym. And a pallet gym only has one thing to do, which is a pallet. Technically it has lockers, but it only has one resource to use, which is the pallet. So it's called a pallet gym. Anyway, so first let's talk about long wall jungle gyms. When you approach a long wall jungle gym, you always run through the pallet and to the right to the window. The only time that you don't do this is if you see the killer cut you off some through the middle somehow and not follow you straight through the pallet. Once you vault the window, the killer can either vault behind you and you just have to choose whether to go left or right, or the killer's just gonna turn one of the directions and whichever way they go, you wanna go the opposite way to try to yoink distance out of the chase. So in this example, first I go left and around to the L point of the wall, which if I curve outwards enough, I can get a fast vault off. Usually, and I say usually because dedicated servers, you can get a fast vault off if you reacted quick enough to the killer vault. Once you vault, if the killer forces you the other way or if they vault and you just choose to go the other way, you should, and I say should, be able to get to the pallet in time before the killer can catch you. And these all depend on certain things. It depends on your ping, uh, if DBD server just feels like fucking you today, your reaction time to when the killer vaults the window, and whether you're stupid like me in this instance and decide to vacuum yourself back on the pallet uh, because I'm used to baiting killers into swinging, even though I told my friend Justice to swing on me anyway like an idiot. Okay, so now let's talk about L wall jungle gems. And I don't really know if that's a good thing to call it, but it's basically like a short wall jungle gym or a regular jungle gym. Maybe you just think it's normal and then there's a long one. Anyway, you can treat this next jungle gym, the L wall jungle gym, just like you treat a TNL wall, where if the killer goes around, you can get a couple loops out of it just going in a circle. But there's also that 50-50 coin toss aspect of it if the killer doubles back on the L side. And I'll just let it play. but uh, there's not a lot of tricks to do here. It's literally just vault, run through the pallet, hopefully enough distance to go through again. Maybe the killer respects the pallet. Maybe you don't have distance, you have to drop the pallet, uh, but basically you just rotate it clockwise and you should be fine. There's some instances where the killer will moonwalk on the like bottom of the L, if you can imagine that. But uh, again, these are 50-50s. It depends how you think the killer plays, what you think they're gonna do, coin toss. You gotta randomize your own looping and just try to get through it there's not there's not with the 50 50 it's literally just guessing it's it's almost just guessing the only it's an educated guess based on what you've learned from the killer so far in this match that's it okay so quick and i mean real quick i'm gonna say this is a pallet gym and again a pallet gym is different from a jungle gym because a pallet gym has no window vault it just has a pallet hence it's a pallet gym it's the only resource in this gym there's no special way to loop this. There's just spots. You want to stand basically on the on the uh, on the super short wall side, the opposite of the pallet, to see what the killer's doing. But other than that, there's no specific rule. You loop it just like a filler pallet, as tightly as you can. And uh, I, I I would say don't overgreed this pallet. But yeah, pallet jump. And now shack. Basically, shack is looped similar to how you loop it L wall. Uh, you run in through the non-pallet doorway and vault the window, but on you only vault the window if you're sure the killer is coming in behind you. If the killer follows you through the window, you can just keep going around, just like an L wall until the window is locked off. Alternatively, sometimes the killer will approach the doorway as though they're going to follow you through, 
but they'll begin moonwalking back to try to catch you after you vault the window. In this instance, you want to be a little patient in this like middle area until you see the red light for sure. That allows you enough time and distance to get a fast vault if you need to, but also you're not close enough to the window to where they're gonna smack you by on the other side when you're not looking or anything like that. Also notice that you can look through the shack wall here so that you can tell if the killer's actually flanking around or just following you the direction that you ran. So now we're gonna talk about some structures that don't spawn in every map. These are structures that are specific to certain maps. Uh, those structures are like the crane, the little dump truck, the fun bus, the yellow school bus. And then we're also gonna mention types of filler pallets because there's some with a high wall and some with a low wall. And like against killers like Huntress, there's a certain side that you want to loop on. So uh, in no particular order, we're gonna go over those now. Okay, so the crane that spawns on some maps. Um, typically what you can do if you have enough distance is you don't even have to mind game the crane. If the killer just runs around the crane and you run up and vault every single time and they don't double back counterclockwise, you can get usually two vaults in a normal chase, like in a normal game you're not going to have like the maximum distance that you could possibly have. But if you do have enough distance, you can vault the window three times and come around for the fourth time and use the pallet. And even then you can usually get one rotation out of the pallet. Some things that I want to note though, uh, you can look between the crane and see the killer uh, where they are or whatever. And uh, another thing that I think is important to know about this loop is the hitbox on the cars like sticks out super fucking far on the front for whatever reason. So you, I almost I always get one loop out of it because I just get stuck on nothing. So uh, yeah, two to three loops. Don't even mind game it. Don't fake the vault unless you come from the other direction. Like, unless you come from the pallet direction with the killer behind you, there's almost no mind game. They have to run all the way around. And fun bus. So fun bus is considered to be open, or some people say it's fun bus is up, when uh, this middle window is open instead of the back window. People like this variation better because it's way safer because once you vault, you, you still have the option to vault back on like the alternative situation. Anyway, keep in mind with a lot of these loops, they're only really going to be a good option if you loop them in this very specific way. And this is one of those loops. You can't loop, yeah, you can't loop counterclockwise because of uh, trying to get a fast vault. If you try to get a fast vault running counterclockwise, you're never going to get it. Another thing I want to mention and make sure that it's known is right here is a really good spot to stop at to make sure that the killer isn't doubling back. You really want to make sure that they're going to keep following you straight and if they don't you want to be ready to run somewhere else in another direction whatever you have to use because if they double back and force you counterclockwise you don't want to vault right into them obviously now uh i don't really know what other people call this i usually just call it like the dump truck but it's this truck with the vault window that a lot of people like sleep on a lot of people don't like this vault but something i've noticed is as long as you come from like if you were driving the truck, as long as you come from the left side with the killer and you just immediately vault, unless the killer goes like around the back of the truck instead of through it and around the front, you can get like two vaults out of it usually. But even if you only get one vault out of it, like if you force the killer to go around anything in Dead by Daylight, you're buying your team time. And so even though this isn't like my first choice of where I would loop, it's still like super useful. I mean, even though there's like nothing to say about it, you just vault it. Don't get stuck on the ramp in the back. Try not to fall off the ramp in the back like I did. And uh, you should be fine for like two loops, maybe three. I, I don't usually get three, but I mean, you can probably get three out of it, who knows. Also, there's this little hole in the back of the truck where for some reason the killer thinks they can hit you before you vault and they go into the back of the truck with you. You can glance through this little hole in the back and just watch to see if the killer goes left, which means you need to turn around or if they just follow you the normal good way for you so you can come around for another vault. You can get that information by looking through that hole just by angling your camera. You don't have to crouch. You don't even really have to slow down. Just take a peek real quick with your camera. I'm really upset that I didn't demonstrate this, but uh, yeah, there's a hole in the back of the truck to look through. Now real quick, let's talk about safe and unsafe pallets. The pallet here that I'm showing actually isn't like super unsafe. I've, there's definitely worse ones, but there's way safer pallets. And the idea is with an unsafe pallet, is as a killer, you never want to get stunned by this pallet. But as survivor, you need, you desperately 
need to get a stun on at least a good killer um, if you want any hope of making it to another loop, especially if some resources in the area have been used. The reason you want to get a stun is because the loop is so short that if you don't get a stun and the killer just doubles back immediately, now you have to do what's called panic vaulting or something else creative to create some distance so that you don't get hit. Whereas if you get a stun, the killer basically might as well just break the fucking pallet because the stun duration is so long that they already basically lost you. You're going to get to another resource. It might not even be worth the chase depending on how many gens have been done in your chase already. It just might not be worth it. That actually includes four lanes, which we're going to talk about now. So in a four lane, you almost always want to hit the window in a way that gives you a fast fall. Sometimes the window is on an inner lane wall, and sometimes it's on the outer wall. Typically when it's on the outer wall, you have to vault coming into the whole structure. But when it's on the um, inside like this, and it's very rarely when it's on the outside, you can vault from inside to the outer edge. But the bigger thing that I want to talk about with four lanes is the fact that this pallet here is super unsafe because you can't see around it, the killer can moonwalk around it easily. And so what you what I usually try to do is get a stun, just like the previous pallet, you wanna get a stun on unsafe pallets. Okay, so the last thing I was gonna actually go in depth on that I decided not to really go as in depth on is the height difference between different sides of safe pallets, which I'll show now. Some pallets will have a taller side and a shorter side. Obviously you want to loop the taller side against like a Huntress or a Deathslinger but you would want to loop mostly any other killer on like the shorter side so that you can see the killer more obviously and know when they're going to double back. There's exceptions to this, like when the short side is shaped favorable for hillbilly to curve around, but um, I'm not going to get into too much of this because I'm realizing I could do a whole video on each killer's counterplay and to try to fit that in the end of this video would be ridiculous. Just keep in mind, even when there's double tall sides, there's usually a case where one side is a bit shorter, even just a little bit, and you can see the killer's head usually peeking up over it and so that's an important thing to keep in mind when you're looping killers is to use these visual cues of which way the killer might be doubling back to your advantage or to sacrifice that to break the line of sight against killers that are ranged um, it's just a good thing to think about all right guys that's gonna do it for my looping tutorial video I know I didn't cover every type of structure there is to loop, there's like special structures that aren't a main building, like the Strode buildings and uh, the Bad Hand buildings, but this video is getting really long, so maybe I'll make another video. That being said, like if you like, subscribe if you liked me, and uh, yeah, I'm working on 300 subscribers right now, so yeah, I would really appreciate that. Other than that, I hope you guys have a good night. Do you play bad? <laughs> how do I show how to actually, how a shitty killer is going to loop? I don't know.